Matthias, it's so I don't I don't even know where to begin. This is a real treat. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for letting me be Plan B. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> Now, Matthias, how does it feel to stand in these holy halls? You probably feel right at home. Yeah, it looks very different, though. So, really, uh, huge compliments to the uh, marketing team, event team of SMP to make it like this. Uh, if we would have the budget, we would try to do the same, but uh, <laughs> no, it really looks nice and uh, I'm very impressed to see the dome in such a different atmosphere today. It, it has switched things up very yeah. much so, right? So, you know what it's all about, Matthias, or maybe you don't because you just got here, but we are looking to find parallels and to find that comparison that we can all grow with and, and learn from when it comes to our corporate world by looking at the world of athletes and top performance sports. And one of the main things that I see is that you have certain, you have equipment, you have tools, you have a whole entourage of doctors, of trainers, of coaches, right, to make things work and to all fall into place perfectly. That is the key to success, that it's a team effort. Right. Um, where would you see the parallels to the business world? You are also in the supervisory board. Um, so what, where do you learn from your own athletic past, for example? Um, yeah, I mean, we've had the examples uh, just in the last two years. Like two years ago, we really had a team that was functioning well. Everybody was uniting uh, behind the common goal. And uh, we were pretty sure and certain that the last season, like the season after, would even be better. Uh, we had more talent, individual talent on the team, but somehow it didn't click. We didn't find a way to, to unite the guys behind, behind the goal. And uh, I think it's the same in the corporate world. If uh, you have a lot of talents, but they are not in it, they're not, uh, they don't feel the spirit of the company and the philosophy, uh, you will never lift the whole uh, potential of the company. So uh, between the corporate world and uh, sports world, there's a lot of parallels and um, yeah. So how do you tell us this? How do you, this is probably the question of all questions and there are probably numerous answers, but what would be perhaps one method or one of your approaches to motivate your team players, to motivate your colleagues? Um, I think it starts before that even. I mean, when you have them on board, you have already recruited them, but it starts in the recruiting process already that you find the people that really match your profile, that match your philosophy, your culture, And from there on, it's easy. And I think it's a little thing to keep uh, employees motivated. In our days, it's really tough to get employees in, and keep them on board. But I don't think that it's only financial things that motivate people our days. It's really what you provide as a company for the people to make them feel comfortable. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do a lot off the court for our players that they wouldn't get usually. For mm -hmm. example, they're coming here with a little family. We will take care that they will have kindergarten places that uh, the women will have. If they're looking for a job, we will support them in finding it. And it's all those little things that sum up to uh, create a, a good atmosphere in the uh, working day. So you're basically saying it has to be a holistic approach to your employees you're looking to recruit as well as the players that you're scouting. Right, right. That's okay. very important. Now, you did just mention uh, professionals or young professionals, and we know that we have been seeing this lack of staff, right? This lack of skilled personnel. People are retiring, and even when you recruit them, they have to be trained. Again, I see many parallels because these young professionals, you were just saying, you have to offer a lot. And right. they are demanding. When we were 20, 10 years ago, Right. Uh, back in the day when we were when we were of the age of the next gen leaders, um, you know, we were grateful for what we could get in some situations. But they are demanding. And I feel that they have a different approach towards dealing with pressure. They're just they, they, they act so smoothly and so chill in so many situations. They have that self-security right. and that confidence. Right. Do you see the same thing in the world of sports? And can we learn from these young professionals how to deal with stress better? I mean, now we talked about like what uh, sports and uh, companies have in common. I think there's also some differences. So I was hosting, uh, we also have a junior uh, Bundesliga team and uh, under 19 and under 16s. And we had a Elternabend. Um, I hope everybody knows, like a parents a PTA evening. Yeah, right. Something evening, like yeah. that. And um, I was telling them what you can forget about from now on, because they're all students. And they have to practice five to six times a week. On the weekends, they will have two to three uh, games. So work-life balance 
please cut that word off your dictionary for the next couple of years. It doesn't exist. And I okay. think that's a bit different in, in the corporate world. You have to provide a certain work-life balance. And I mean, we're really working with young people only, like the medical staff uh, taken out. But I mean, our players, they're all between, let's say, uh, 18 and uh, 30 years old. So really young professionals. And we see as our task to really uh, teach them about life also. I mean, mm -hmm. usually at that age, they will, would sti uh, still be at the university. And now they're already like professionals with a lot of pressure and they have to perform. And um, yeah, so we're very close to them also off the court. That sounds like a huge responsibility. And in the work world or in the corporate work world, of course, burnouts are nothing new, right? These have been around for years. We are aware that this is a danger of putting too much pressure on our employees. How do you, uh, how do you support them emotionally when you say on and off the court? Maybe, again, this is something we can take away. Yeah, I think uh, psychological support is very important. Uh, it also depends on what kind of philosophy the coach is having. Um, but uh, for next season, this was one of the takeaways from last season that we will need a psychologist for the team and that is also there for individual uh, support. Um, and um, because the pressure, like in the corporate world, uh, you have to work nine to five every week and there's right. also some pressure, but here, while you're doing your job, there's 4,000 people in here watching you and telling what you did wrong and you didn't even know about it. So everybody uh, has an opinion about you. And so the pressure on them is really high to perform and uh, we want to help them in dealing with that pressure uh, with a psychologist that will help. Speaking of uh, a lot of people watching and everybody having an opinion on how you could better perform, um, what's your tip for tonight? Because I heard there's a game, like the small the small game going on. You want to kind of unzip oh. a little bit of your... Yeah, I mean, just... I already prepared for later, so... <laughs> it wasn't that hard to get. I mean, I know we have a lot of international <laughs> guests here today, so I respect them. Yeah, but now um, you're showing them wh which side to be on. Yeah, it's of supporting. course. I mean, for today, I, uh, any Swiss people? Uh, no, Hungarian people here today, or...? We ha I know we have Swiss okay, people so... here. Oh, they already left. <laughs> good, <Okay>. good. <laughs> no. So... Closing, because this is all the time we have. First of all, thank you so much for being so spontaneous yeah. and joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Of course, it was our great pleasure. Lastly, do you have one little piece of information you'd like to pass on to mainly, not only, I know we have athletes, but mainly the corporate world out there on uh, their path to success in the future when it comes to mindset? Wow, that is a tough one. No um, pressure, <laughs> but make it count. <laughs> I think that uh, with the new management board uh, that S&P has hired over the last years, uh, they will know what to do right. I was very impressed by the opening speech today. I was here uh, in the morning uh, when Jens was holding the uh, speech and I think they're doing a lot of things right and I don't feel like I'm in a position to give advice there. Uh, S&P is on a good way. Uh, I was very impressed by all the partners that they have. I wish I would have as many partners <laughs> as they have. You're working uh, on it. Increasing by 50% as I saw and um, really impressive story and I think more to come. Thank you so much and enjoy. Are you coming to the, uh, to the after show party? Of course. Yeah. Well, now you have to, kind yeah. of. <laughs> right? yeah. So let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for Matthias Lautenschläger. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the after party. Yeah. Okay, see you. It Bye. wasn't that bad, right? Didn't hurt. It was okay. <laughs> Best plan B ever, right? Best stand in ever. All right, so um, again, the conversation, the stage talk we had planned with Camilla and Andrea, it's going to take place tomorrow. It's not canceled. It's postponed to our closing uh, schedule tomorrow. So keep that in mind. And before we officially wrap it up, thank you guys so much for your energy level. You have made this a fantastic day, a successful one. It has been a great pleasure. We really value each and every one of our participants, let us say that. And we look forward to celebrating with all of you tonight at the after show party. Um, as for logistics, uh, last piece of information, the shuttle buses are already waiting for you to bring you to the after show party so you don't need to worry about transportation. Also, please do keep in mind, go crazy tonight, but tomorrow be on time. Okay, because it's always very respectful for the first speaker to have a, you know, a, a crowd with a clear mind in the audience. And our first presentation is at 9.30. Doors open over an hour before that. So you can come, grab a coffee, get settled. And we look forward to welcoming all of you by absolute latest 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning for our first presentation, all right? Thank you so much. Have fun!
Have fun tonight. Thank you.